such emotional growth was worthy of a majestic bubble beard. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the times young Sheldon made us laugh out loud. The only sin in mathology is being stupid. Number 10, Sheldon takes on NASA. When Dr. Ronald Hodges visited a high school science class, he didn't expect to get caught up in a logistics debate with a student in the front row. Then again, maybe Mr. Givens was just projecting his bitterness about his former roommate's success by not giving a heads up about Sheldon. That's a cute idea, but uh, it's not technically possible. Why not? Well, it's hard to explain. The math is pretty complicated. Perhaps I could help you with it. Anyway, this only fuels Sheldon's interest in physics, if only to prove the engineer wrong. Seething with anger, Sheldon goes as far as attempting to remortgage his family home just to make his point. No, the house isn't in my name. I'm nine. We've established this. I do prepare the taxes for my parents, and if we tighten our belts, we'll have sufficient equity for the loan. He gets so caught up in his stubbornness that he even develops an ulcer. Eventually, Sheldon impresses the NASA engineer, only to realize he's ahead of his time. Your math is, is theoretically correct. We don't have the technical capability to execute it. <laughs> so I'm ahead of my time. Well, it would appear so. <laughs> All right, call me when you catch up. Fortunately for Elon Musk. Number nine, Missy, Queen of Sass. If Sass was measured like IQ, we reckon Missy could surpass her family combined. Tomorrow at lunch, would you mind sitting with your brother? Don't do it, Georgie. D stay out of this. I ate with him in second grade. It really hurt my social life. She never holds back on saying what's on her mind, no matter how savage it might be. In the earlier seasons, her sassiness is as hilarious as it is adorable, and quickly cemented her as a standout character. So kids, we have a little family business to discuss. You're pregnant? No. We're getting a puppy? No. I'm not sure I care. As she grows up, her sting only gets stronger, although it never stops being amusing. While Sheldon is perhaps her favorite target, no one's safe from her biting words. Okay. I don't have a donkey, but if I did, I'd take my ass out of here. Indeed, most scenes featuring Missy Cooper are guaranteed to make you gasp and laugh out loud in equal measure. Look, she calls it as she sees it, and we love her for it. Pastor Jeff's wife is so much prettier than him. It's like Barbie married a turtle. Number eight, the Battle of the Brisket. As far as mother-in-law and son-in-law relationships go, Connie and George's is affectionately antagonistic. You're a horrible person. What'd I say? I want to know what it said. Me too. Just eat. Can I read it? You are a horrible person, ain't I? Their banter brings plenty of entertainment, but perhaps nothing tops the brisket incident. George tries to convince Connie to share her recipe, but she playfully rebuffs him at every turn. Get the paper before I change my mind. You're gonna do it to him again, aren't you? I kinda have to. This propels George to take drastic measures to hunt down the secret recipe. What follows is pure hilarity, as Connie sends him on a wild cross-state goose chase for completely unrelated ingredients, although they apparently make a great cup of joe. And what does it do to the brisket? Oh, I have no idea. Then why did you send George all the way to New Orleans? Well, they don't sell this around here. Mm. George's reaction when he figures out he's been duped is just too funny. Although this tale has a happy ending, there's a good lesson learned. Don't mess with me, Ma. You broke into my home and tried to steal it. Oh, George! You told her we went over there. <gasps> oh, George Jr. I didn't say nothing. I was cool. I am loving this. Number seven, just Billy. After 12 seasons of The Big Bang Theory, we believed that Billy Sparks was just another jerk who gave Sheldon a hard time. While that certainly seems to be the case in the young Sheldon pilot, Billy is mainly shown as this lovable goofball who is maybe a few eggs short of a dozen if you catch our drift. Billy. What? You are Firebeak. Okay. So what do you do? 
I'm fire weak. His cluelessness and innocence often result in side-splitting moments, usually delivered with impeccable comic timing. Every time he shows up, we can't help but grin, knowing he'll say something outrageously funny. And he never disappoints. She's like your child. You wouldn't let somebody eat your child. Does my child taste like chicken? Billy! Missy! Sure, his, um, let's call it naivete might annoy some, <clears throat> Sheldon, but we adore him for it even more. I have a nightlight that looks like Spider-Man, but I don't turn it on. Go ahead. Why don't you turn it on? I'm afraid of spiders. Yeah, seems like a good place to stop. Number six, Sheldon gets the family in a loaf of trouble. Few people can make a fuss about the taste of bread and almost get their whole family exiled. However, most people are not Sheldon Cooper. His aversion to change escalates rapidly when a minor alteration in his family's favorite bread brand leads them to being wrongly accused of supporting communism. My kids love this country. Isn't that right, Chip? Yes. Although, in all fairness, the social security system is a form of You love this country. I love this country. Oh, did we mention that this episode falls somewhere within the Cold War timeline? Anyway, the family goes to extreme lengths to clear their name. Connie especially has an entertaining way of showing her neighbors just how patriotic she is. To the prairies, to the ocean, white with gold, God bless America. It really is an absolute riot. Eventually, Sheldon comes around to the new taste, but as far as his family is concerned, he's still toast. Still not talking to me, huh? Well, I'll check back in tomorrow. Number five, Doctors Sturgis and Linkletter get hammered. Doctors Sturgis and Linkletter offer one of the most hilarious rivalries on young Sheldon, whether that's in the professional realm or vying for Connie's attention. All right, if we're both gonna pursue her, let's lay down some ground rules. Fair enough. And my ginger snaps are moist and delicious. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. However, it turns out that they're even funnier when they're getting along. When Dr. Sturgis rebukes Dr. Linkletter's attempts to steer him back to academia, the pair end up sharing a drink on a park bench. Puts me in mind of uh, Camus' The Myth of Sisyphus. 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 That's the guy. Their intoxicated introspection soon turns into a sing-along, and it couldn't be funnier. While Dr. Sturgis drunkenly makes his way to Connie's home, Dr. Linkletter takes a power nap on a park bench, only to be woken up by a cop. If this is an indication of their potential friendship, we need to see them on the same side more often. Lollipop, lollipop, ooh, lolly, lollipop, 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 ooh, lolly, lollipop, 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 ooh, lolly, lollipop, lollipop. Ba -bum, bum, ba. Number 4. Den of Sin In season 5, Connie becomes the owner of a booming laundromat business, or so Mary thinks. Little does she know, it's actually a front for a thriving gambling operation. And Georgie is in on it too. He didn't listen to us then, he's not going to listen now. So we do nothing. We let him make his own mistakes. That just sounds like another way of saying we do nothing. I'm gonna go down there. Hey, that's a mistake I'm gonna let you make. Mary learns the truth from a church newsletter, which is pretty ironic since she suggested advertising there. The real fun starts when Mary tries to confront Connie, only to be left even more frustrated than before. Oh, please, it's not a den of sin. Although that is a great name, den of sin. That would get some butts in seats. <laughs> Meanwhile, in another funny storyline, President Hagemeyer sends Sheldon on an aimless mission to track down the fictitious Grand Chancellor. However, it's Mary's several hilarious attempts to keep her family away from this den of sin that steals the spotlight. Because I am your mother and it is wrong. Well, I'm working for your mother and she says it's okay. And I answer to a higher power and he says it's also wrong, so I win, let's go. Number three, awkward family dinner. Meeting the parents is always a little awkward. Meeting the parents when you're carrying their 17-year-old son's unborn child is a whole other level of uncomfortable. And thank you for bringing Mandy into our family and watch over this child as he or she grows and becomes a God-fearing Baptist. Amen. Amen. Smooth. 
Indeed, Mandy's first encounter with the Coopers is intense. She and Georgie argue about their future, while Mary insists that the child be raised as a Baptist. I'm having a baby. I don't need to marry another one. I know I'm young now, but think about it. When you're a dried up old lady, I'll be your hot trophy husband. Meanwhile, the twins add to the hilarity by speculating why they've been banished from this family dinner while dining with the Sparkses next door. Back at the Coopers, dinner descends into chaos when Mary and George start arguing about their relationship. I want you to admit that this marriage hasn't exactly been a bed of roses. Wake up! No marriage is a bed of roses. Well, then I guess we nailed it. I guess we did. And that kid is gonna be Baptist. Connie chimes in with the last laugh, cutting through the tension with a sharp-witted quip. So, Mandy. Glad you came. Number two, the sin of mythology. Sheldon isn't a fan of religion, especially when it clashes with science. The first day had just begun. So before the Big Bang? There was no Big Bang. There was only the word. Was the word kaboom? However, when Mary freaks out over the game Dungeons and Dragons, she sends the twins to Sunday school. Of course, this backfires when Sheldon decides to learn about several religions, instead of following the path of righteousness his mom thought she'd steered him onto. Pastor Jeff encouraged me to approach religion scientifically, so it only makes sense to enlarge my database. No. Your database is Baptist. That's all the data you need, Baptist data. After some research and a wild dream, he creates his own belief system, mathology. He starts recruiting followers during his Baptist Sunday school, much to Pastor Jeff's dismay. I'm starting my own religion. I'm sorry, what? I'm calling it mathology. It's based on a universal binary system. That's terrific, Sheldon, but this is a Baptist Sunday school. I know. I'm here to convert everybody. Given the sole sin of mathology, we're surprised he even lets Billy join. The only sin in mathology is being stupid. Although perhaps successfully converting him would have been Sheldon's version of turning water into wine. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Connie being a mother cluckin' savage. She cooks up a hilarious plan to crack Sheldon out of his existential crisis. Apparently, I can't know what here is. So maybe I could just set her on your bed. Yeah, okay, okay. I'll get dressed. Make it snappy. Sheldon curses. Well, kind of. Mima does not approve. Poodle poo! Okay, somebody's gotta teach this kid to swear. It's embarrassing. A bad president. We also didn't realize the president got so involved in marital disputes. Maybe you should go across the street and apologize. I can't do that. Why not? Because if I do, it sets a bad precedent. What's Nixon got to do with it? What? You said bad president. Sheldon's a stickler for rules. Unfortunately for him, his dorm mates think he's better stuck to a wall. I don't need a pen and paper to take names. You, what's your name? You know I'll find out, and there will be consequences. Hey, what are you? Mm. 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 Connie extinguishes Pastor Jeff's self-righteousness. The power of the fire extinguisher compels him to back off. Let's just see what the people think about this. Yeah. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mary Chases the Roadrunner We don't think we've seen a funnier sight than Mary chasing Sheldon around the garage, and we think Connie would agree. You can't run away from me forever! I don't have to do it forever just till you get tired. Mary, I'm on a way to go get my video camera. Don't get you until I get back. This is not a joke. Sheldon, get over here. But hang on, how did we get here? Well, as any Big Bang fan knows, Sheldon's a notorious germaphobe. And with flu season in full force, it will take more than a graffitied face mask to keep him safe. He seals himself in a germ-proof hedge of protection, armed with everything he might need. Just when you think he's going to zig, you get a big old zag. It's ridiculous. I'm I'm gonna take it down. No, you can't force him out of a phobia. Well, what do we do? We can't live in there. Well, actually, he can. When he refuses to come out, Mary goes in, leading to a chase that couldn't be more hysterical. Perhaps Mary fails to catch her roadrunner, but we're as tickled as Connie watching her try. Get over here! <laughs> Get over here! 
Sheldon like Hoopa. Get here. Right now. Oh, I think I'm gonna wet myself. <laughs> Which young Sheldon moment made you say bazinga? Let us know in the comments. When you shake it, there's a rattling sound as if nuts are inside. Fine. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.